welcome to my youtube channel so the topic that i'll be briefing today is atrial fibrillation it is the most common sustained cardiac arrhythmia and it is characterized by multiple foci within the atria that fire continuously in a chaotic pattern causing irregular atrial rhythm so you can see the normal heart picture and the normal electrical pathway however in the other one you can see the abnormal electrical pathway and erratic impulses producing from the left atrium as well and there are multiple foci that are firing the electrical impulse so it will lead to atrial fibrillation the jvb will be raised without a wave there will be irregularly irregular pulse and on ecg there will be no p waves and the rhythm will be normal but irregular qrs complexes will be there and uh, the there will be irregularly irregular rr interval so this is a rhythm of atrial fibrillation you can see there is no p wave in the rhythm and all rr complexes are irregularly irregular that is there is not a specific or a fixed space between rr interval the the above one is a normal heartbeat with the presence of p wave qrs complex however in the atrial fibrillation there is no p wave and there is irregularity and the irregularity is also not regularly there another picture of atrial fibrillation rhythm so the causes of acute atrial fibrillation include the mnemonic can be used is pyrates p for pulmonary embolism ischemic heart disease including mi and rheumatic heart disease atrial myxoma thyrotoxicosis ethanol and sepsis so these all are the causes of acute atrial fibrillation however the chronic atrial fibrillation is caused by hypertension or congestive heart failure so there are three types of classification of atrial fibrillation it can be paroxysmal it can be persistent and it can be permanent atrial fibrillation so the paroxysmal is always intermittent and it is self terminating persistent atrial fibrillation sustains for more than 7 days and it can be terminated by chemical or electrical cardioversion however the permanent atrial fibrillation is typically of more than 1 year duration and uh, the cardioversion is also failed so the general treatment goals for atrial fibrillation include control of the ventricular rate we have to restore the sinus rhythm then we have to prevent recurrent episodes or the reduction of their frequency or duration we have to prevent thromboembolic complications and we have to minimize adverse effects from the therapy for hemodynamically unstable patients we have to immediately perform electrical cardioversion to sinus rhythm so all kind of tachycardias in except for pulseless vt all kind of tachycardias when they are unstable you have to directly perform immediate electrical cardioversion except for pulseless vt because that is a shockable rhythm and you have to perform a defibrillation and there is a difference between cardioversion and defibrillation so for all the tachycardias except for pulseless vt we will perform and those who are hemodynamically unstable what do i mean by hemodynamically unstable patients those who are having hypotension or signs and symptoms of shock or signs and symptoms of ischemic heart disease there is acute altered level of mm, consciousness or acute altered mental status so all these patients will require immediate electrical cardioversion to sinus rhythm so what are the cardioversion indications i have told you earlier that hypotension chest pain dyspnea confusion etc and uh, for hemodynamically stable patients we will do medical management and these should be done for controlling rate and controlling rhythm so for rate control the target rate we have to achieve is 60 to 100 beats per minute and the agents that we can use are beta blockers which are the preferred agents calcium channel blocker which include varapamil or diltiazem and digoxin This is Chadwick's score, which we have to calculate to know whether we require anticoagulation or not. So, and what drug should we use for anticoagulation? So, C for congestive heart failure, H for hypertension, age of more than or equal to seventy-five, diabetes mellitus, stroke, 
vascular diseases age of 65 to 74 years and sex category of female so each of these risk factor is given a score of 1 except for the age of more than 75 years also previous history of a stroke so these are given a scores of 2 total score is 9 if you have a score 0 so only aspirin can be enough however the score of 1 requires anticoagulation with warfarin or aspirin and for score 2 or more we require warfarin therapy so the step 2 is rhythm control so it is based on two factors if the atrial fibrillation is less than 48 hours that is it is acute onset and there is low risk of a stroke using Chad's West score so what we will do is we will give IV heparin followed by cardioversion electric cardioversion is preferred over pharmacological cardioversion and electric cardioversion is called DC cardioversion pharmacological cardioversion can be done using parenteral flecainide, procainamide or amiodron these all are antiarrhythmic drugs so for acute onset uh, atrial fission we will anticoagulate followed by cardioversion and anticoagulation by heparin if atrial fibrillation is more than 48 hours and there is high risk of a stroke using Chad's score then we will have to follow any of the following two options so the option was one is we will anticoagulate for three weeks then perform cardioversion then we will anticoagulate for four weeks post cardioversion and the anticoagulation should be done with warfarin and target INR should be kept between two to three so in our option two we will skip the three week anticoagulation before cardioversion and we will simply perform a transesophageal echocardiogram to look for left atrial thrombus if left atrial thrombus is present then we will follow the option one that is anticoagulation three weeks prior to cardioversion and four weeks post cardioversion and if there is no atrial thrombus then we will directly perform cardioversion skipping the anticoagulation step so the chronic atrial fibrillation requires same rate control with beta blocker or calcium channel blocker and anticoagulation with warfarin and uh, lone atrial fibrillation which refers to atrial fibrillation in patients who are less than 60 years of age and without any underlying heart disease or cardiovascular risk factors these patients are low risk for embolism uh, that is a stroke therefore heparin or warfarin are not indicated and aspirin will be enough so that's it for today i hope you learned something from it if you do please like my video and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much for watching